freezing. It's Baltic. Welcome to UK. Right. We're rocking. Yep. Okay, cool. What's up guys, I'm Lex and welcome to a video that is going to cover training chest when you've got shitty shoulders. Okay, so I'm going to stop saying okay for every sentence. That's going to be the goal of this video. I'm just going to roll into sentences. My sister can't start a sentence, you know, without saying right. Is it? Yeah, if you say to her, I'm not speaking to you. If you say right, and she'll go, right. Mm. Okay, right. And she said this is a Twitch show. But she couldn't say a sentence right. Right, listen! <laughs> so. <laughs> right. I put up on... <laughs> I put up on Twitter the other day and I think across some of the other social platforms like Insta Stories and Snapchat what videos you'd like to see and I put up a screenshot of some of my ideas and one of the top ones that came through first off was bad shoulders and then still being able to train your chest and this seems to be a common theme running through most of the blokes who've trained. Why? Because when we first start in the first couple of years of training we all go a bit ham, we all go a bit stupid, we all try and lift a bit too heavy before our technique's good enough, and we all end up doing something that tweaks our shoulders. And it's common because the shoulders are a very easily tweaked joint, that the actual muscles surrounding the shoulder also keep the shoulder in the shoulder joint. It, it holds that joint together. So if you tweak a muscle anywhere around the shoulder, even if it's just a little, a little twinge, a little strain, you're gonna feel it and you're gonna be limited in what you can do. So like most of us who are stubborn, I know I was, were you? Yep. Train through the pain. Yeah, train through, through the pain. No bro. pain, no gain, bro. So I bro. numb up. And most people hurt themselves either on bench press or behind the neck shoulder press or shoulder presses. I hurt mine doing both. <laughs> so I first heard it do the bench and that was just a grinder. That wasn't an acute injury. That was like just over time, the shoulder got a bit more painful, a bit more painful. I didn't listen to it. I pushed through and what that meant was I, I created an impingement in the shoulder. By that I mean the area that was hurting the shoulder was then being compensated for by say the trap coming a little bit more to take in and stabilize the shoulder. And what that does is it shifts you out of alignment and out of balance and over time that gets worse and worse and worse and it ends up being impingement issues and you have to rehabilitate and you have to reset and restructure. So today we're gonna to take you through warm-ups, being ready and giving you some alternate exercises that you can do in the meantime while you rehabilitate and then you can get back to maybe if you enjoy doing those bench presses, get back to proper bench pressing with some weight to improve strength. Remember, muscle stimulus is all just about the mind-muscle connection, the contraction, and overload. And overload doesn't have to come from masses and masses of weight. It can come from a high volume of light reps. It can come from pause rep work. Overload is overload to the muscle. It will respond. Now, if you're looking specifically for strength, yes, you're gonna have to lift heavier weight. But if that's not your concern, like it's not my concern, I'm not a power lifter, then we can still grow the muscle, we can still stimulate the muscle, utilizing different forms of overload, which we will cover in this video chosen by you. What else are we gonna cover in this video? Physique update, little one. Well, little one, little one. So if you follow my Instagram, you'll know that I have a hashtag Instalex. And it's because I'm trying to get across that some, when you see that picture on Instagram of me, if I've been working out or I'm in like a certain state of looking awesome, that it's Instalex, it's that moment. It's, it's an acute moment in time, it doesn't last. And I always try and get this across. So today what I wanna show you when we go into the gym is the physique before we start and then show the physique after. So in line with that, I'm gonna show you what I take before I go to the gym, but I want you to know so that, you know, transparency. So yeah, on with that, fast pan now. There's gonna be a pre-workout, I'm taking a vitamin and I'm taking a creatine. We've got the PSI in here, this is vasodilation, pump, no stims, RPM, no pump, focus and stims. So we'll be taking a scoop of the RPM, a scoop of the PSI. Then when we start training in the blood flows, that'll kick in, helps fill me out. Now the vitamins, uh, these are just a good male vitamin standard. Look on the back of them, make sure they've got in zinc, selenium and a good vit, uh, vitamin B complex in there. If they haven't got those and it's usually a crappy mix. Creatine, this is the micronized version, this is the Crea 8. So you know now it's all the HP stuff. Link in the description, you get 10% off with Lex 10. Give them a go if you want to, use Lex 10, always helps me out. Cheers mate. And other than that, all I need to tell you is uh, this thing about creating now, which I already filmed before this one, but it's funny, so I'm gonna keep it in, so switch to that now. So if you've got one of those bros that's like, hey, hey man, just taking some creatine, dude. Fucking feel swole. I felt it, I felt it kick in. Just go, yeah, bro. Cool story, bro. It doesn't work on the spot. It's not acute. It builds up over time. Five grams a day, pre or post workout. Just remember to take it. That's enough. Jobs are good. Cell tech, no. If you want to get really huge, you've got to find the supplement with the picture of the guy looking fat and then eight minutes later 
jacked and massive and suddenly tanned and hairless and wearing different shorts and in a different pose and, and you, I don't know, stars and a fist coming at you. <laughs> just, can I just say, f you blue raspberry. Whoever came up with this stupid, dumbass flavor, raspberries aren't blue, they're not blue. Make red raspberry, make it taste like a raspberry. Thank you. Releasing the Kraken Insert insert camera shake on, okay. on that bit there. Yeah, okay <laughs> Gains What a man Ugh, What a man <laughs> Okay, so we're in the gym and it is fucking freezing Chat moves footwork footwork Jay in all British gyms for like 10 minutes everyone comes in and just River, river dances to get warm. Check out my really cool keyring. Oh. Yeah, we've got the mic setup going on again. A bit of better sound, less kind of blowing out, but we'll see. Um, if it does peak a little bit, apologies. We're just playing with this new system. Other little handy hint, before every session, I have a load of fast acting carbohydrates. Why do I have those? So that there's a lot of glucose flowing around my system so that I can maintain the pump and also replenish the glycogen as I use it. Today I'm going with two packets of these 17 carbs. So we've got in there roughly 35 carbs from those two little packets. So a little something you can try if you don't do that already. It can be anything, anything high carb, low fat you like. Caramel rice cakes or Skittles. And I also got one more thing. 80% dark chocolate. This is a, uh, what's that chocolate company called? The nice one. Green and black. No, is that right? The high cocoa content dark chocolate actually helps reduce the onset of fatigue. 10 grams before your training, it can actually help your performance and you get to eat chocolate and say health. Do you know that like, bros wouldn't be able to do this? Chocolate, chocolate, you're gonna get fat. I'm like, well, cool story, bro. Mm. Right, okay, and let's go through mobility now whilst I'm chewing cookies. Because it's boring and you don't want to watch me do mobility exercises. You probably don't want to hear me eat either. If you're dealing with any kind of issue or just generally anyway, you should be doing this and that is a big flashy title, mobility. Just so, so they pay attention. Did I hope you pay attention? Good. There is a video I've already covered on this. Link for it will be in the description. I'll put the link in there for the posture one and the warm up one, but we'll quickly scan through it now. So have your arm up against something so that you're able to maintain elbow contact and from there, rib cage down, but chest up and you're literally going to just move your hand away from the wall, keeping the elbow where it is. And you can see it's just that little bit of motion. But this helps with um, the mobility and flexibility of the shoulder. And over time, you'll be able to go a little further back. Your chest will want to raise and lift like that because it's trying to compensate. It's trying to not let the shoulder have to move. You have to pin that upper body down and just think about rotating at the shoulder joint. Number two, taking a light dumbbell. Anywhere between like two and four kilogram dumbbell, really light, super light. You want to hold the dumbbell with your thumb facing up. Bring the arm right through this range of motion. As you get to here, your chest is going to want to pop. Same thing again. Don't let it. Keep it down and right all the way through up to the top and then back down. And this is just your reps like this. Thinking about just rota rotating at the shoulder joint only. Another really simple one with the dumbbell is to take something a little bit heavier, say about 10 kilograms, and all you're going to do, hold the dumbbell like this. You're going to rotate it out, stop. Thinking about rotating just at the shoulder joint and then back. You're going to do this like 10, 15 times. And then you're going to do it the other way. Rotate it in, stop and back. And this is really helping to warm up all the rotator cuff. Uh, elbow in line with the shoulder and you rotate up again, not letting that body pop. But a lot of times this will hurt. This will, this will aggravate the issue, but people think it's a rehab movement, so they go through it continually, regardless. Don't do it. If it hurts, don't do it. You can do that same rehab movement on a cable, keeping the cables here. You're going to take the handle and just rotate out like that, pinning your elbow into your body. Or if that hurts, simply grab the cable in the hand and step away, pulling the stack like that and then just hold and it's like an isometric hold and then step back in let the, let the stack reconnect so it takes the load off and then step back out just holding it 10 seconds at a time super simple super easy really really effective the final one and this is a zero weight one so you can actually do this anywhere you can do it a couple of times a day which is something we want to do hands behind your back you're going to bring them up here you're going to come out to the side here as you come up you turn your palms up to the ceiling and over to the top and you literally just rep like this and it's really really simple Really, really useful. Now let's crack on with the workout. Spin. Right, the sound is definitely on now. For the second time, I'm gonna go through the entirety of the bench press because we just recorded 15 minutes with no sound. But hey ho, woo sa, shit happens, we're moving on. So the culprit of most people's shoulder impingement, including mine, the originator of it, this bad boy. 
the bench press. Now I've done an entire video on bench press and it will be linked in the description below and it takes you through everything you need to know about setting up the bench press and it was from when I was learning to do it and everything that I had to be taught from basically a beginner level to getting that bench developed. So check that video out, link in the description, that'll take you through everything. But I will go through the basics now because we're going to be taking the chest workout onto dumbbells, stabilized machines, some cable work and then a free body weight with the dips. And those are things I'm going to cover today. So you'll have five exercises that you'll be able to take and adapt into your routine. I don't do chest days. I do high frequency training which means I train everything twice a week but I'll train three body parts at a time so today I'm just going to train chest just for you to film this video but normally I would do two exercises on chest plus two other body parts of two exercises five sets per body part and I would do roughly between eight to twelve rep ranges as a standard on the normal days I would do a compound and then an isolation or stabilized movement and I would do those two on one day then I'd do two different movements on the next day which will be around about 72 hours later moving on whenever you're lifting with chest and you're lying down on something you always want to be driving through your heels what happens is a lot of people they'll have their feet out of alignment so you'll have one foot in front of the other this is really 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 common this is something you have to get out of your head you have to start training your body to be balanced symmetrical we want our feet ideally just behind our knees where we can plant our heel down from here we want to engage the glutes why? Once we engage the glutes, that's going to help stabilize our hips and stop them shifting from left to right or up and down. So, from the waist up, what we need to be concentrating on, we need an arch in our lower back, but not so excessive that you're releasing your abs. You're just going to lightly keep the abs nice and contracted. You're not going to breathe in heavy, but from here we're going to roll the shoulders back and keep them back. This is going to allow us to engage our lats. Yes, your back has to be engaged whenever you're lifting with chest. By engaging the lats and tensing the back, we're going to help stabilize the shoulders, which is our main goal here. So it's vitally important that you get used to catching yourself, releasing. The point of release that most people are going to make is here, at the base of the movement. So you come down nice and tight, everything's locked in, and at the base of the movement, people then release to then reset to drive back up. The whole motion has to be one, with the body kept in tune throughout the entire rep. So you're going to come down, stop, a conscious stop, and go. That's going to stop you doing a recoil bounce rep, which again is another very easy way of making yourself release your posture. What we don't want is pronation, which is where the shoulder is able to move forward. The shoulder needs to be able to get back throughout the movement. That's going to be aided by consciously contracting the scapula, but also locking in the back. At this position, most people will have their elbows out, and as they come down, the elbows will go wide. That's what we want to avoid. That's going to put a lot of stress on that shoulder. What we want to do before we start is roll those elbows in. As we roll those elbows in, you'll be able to feel that you can contract that back. So we have our feet planted, glutes engaged, arching our lower back. Then as we roll our elbows in, we're able to con contract the lats. And you should be able to then feel the shoulders be pulled and retracted as we come down throughout the motion. Maintain, maintain. And now this is the point where a lot of people, as they drive up, the elbows will splay and they'll press like this. So you end up with a scooped movement that looks like that. Keeping it here contracted, back contracted, and then we're going to drive up through the elbows. See how the shoulder has not shifted position. What you'll see a lot at this point is the chest will dip, shoulders will come forward and people press like this. And this load now is not on the chest, it's on the shoulders. And that's often where when the weight is too heavy, we get a pop and shit breaks. So, talking about flat bench, which is where we're going to start, a lot of people will have the bench like this flat. Put it one single notch up like that. This is still going to give you all of that same stimulation as a flat bench would do. So just by this simple little trick here, you can also take a lot of load off the shoulders, which again might just be enough to help you guys move forward with the training you're already doing. So the flat bench press, but obviously one up from being flat. This is going to be a medium to heavy exercise. But if you have real shoulder problems, uh, you're able to use a lighter weight on this. You can use pause reps. And that means at the negative of the motion, just pause, count one, two, and then drive through the positive. You're going to get that overload. You're going to get the same stimulus, but by taking the weight down, you're also going to reduce that chance of it actually hurting your shoulder. A couple of little handy hints and tweaks that should be able to help reduce, again, the stress on the shoulder and help you maintain a good focus on the chest. Point number one have the dumbbells up on your legs and kick them back using your legs that way you're not stressing your shoulder getting the weight back into position as you lie back kick it up with the leg one 
two. I've used zero shoulder stress to get the weights here. What I want to avoid doing is this, coming in and turning them straight out. Your shoulders are not going to be ready for that movement. It's going to put a lot of stress on the shoulder joint very quickly and that again can just cause these little twings and, and impingements and pains. Okay, so we're in position. Feet set, glutes set, back is arched, lats are engaged, I'm rolling my elbows in. Now, the pain most people will feel is when they turn the dumbbells out here. This will immediately stress the shoulders. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn the dumbbells in ever so slightly. So, from flat, just that, two inches, turning that back end of the dumbbell inward. So what you're looking for with the hand is just a rotation at the wrist, from there, to there, that's it. And you should immediately feel the stress from the shoulder be relieved. This is gonna help us twofold. It's gonna help us bring the elbows in a little bit tighter, which is gonna bring the triceps a little bit more into play, but they're gonna help stabilize, which means the shoulder's gonna be doing less stabilization. So again, that's gonna help reduce any feeling of pain and issues that you have there, and also help you maintain stabilizing the shoulder joint mentally. So then we can improve with that shoulder stabilization and, and develop the stabilizer muscles that are around the shoulder to help it grow into heavier weights over time. There's also another little thing you need to do here once you've rolled that dumbbell in. So once the dumbbell's rolled in, what you're gonna do is angle the back head of the dumbbell weight up towards the ceiling. Maybe half an inch movement from here to here. This is what you'll see a lot of people do. And as they get to the top of the rep, you'll see the dumbbells do this. This now means that the focus of the weights is moving away from the body because we're angling the weights away from the body. What we want is to keep that back head of the dumbbell slightly angled up towards the ceiling in the head of the dumbbell towards the chest. And this is gonna help keep the focus on the chest, off the shoulders, and into the body where we're able to stabilize. So avoid this, maintain this. On the negative, I'm keeping my elbows rolled in, keeping the back tense. At the base, I stop, and then I drive back through the feet, keeping those elbows rolled in. And it's a real nice, smooth drive. And a good point of stopping is where the dumbbells kind of just come alongside the chest, and then drive back up. What we want to avoid it's coming all the way down here, past the chest, and overstretching. This is really, really not good for the shoulders. What it's actually doing is stressing all the ligaments and tendons that connect the shoulder through into the chest, and it's an absolutely unnecessary part of the movement that we include because we think it feels like it's engaging more. The reality of it is the load is coming off the chest, onto ligaments, tendons, and the shoulder, and doing more harm than good. Okay, so now it's cold, we're in the gym. I haven't really done anything other than show you those motions. I've done no real warm-ups, I've done no real sets. I just want to show you, I know we said a physique update, but more physique adaptation. I like to get it across to you guys, that what you see on a lot of the times when you see these high-end edits, when you see good pictures of us, that that's us at our best. So I want to show you how the body will change from now until the end of this workout. So this is me cold. This is me, I know obviously we, we can't do too much because there's a lot of people around, I'm not going to strip down, but you'll be able to see how I'm looking at the moment. I'm not looking too bad obviously, I'm in decent shape all year round. You can see there's no real veins popping, I look okay. I look alright, I not look too much, not, not too shabby, not too shabby, you know. So we'll just see how all this fills and pops and just looks fuller by the end of the workout, which will be the point where we all got our Insta pictures. So we got one exercise down and already you should be able to see how much fuller, a little bit crazier the physique looks. By the time you get going and veins are moving, blood's pumping, whoo, that's the flat done. Now we're gonna move on to an incline dumbbell press. A normal incline will probably be about two up there. So we're talking like a 45 degree angle, something like that. Here's a little trick that I found helped. You put it one up from where you're used to putting it on the incline. So it looks crazy high to start with, but we're gonna adapt the body position a little bit. We're gonna angle the seat at the bottom. Because of the angle of the bench, it's gonna wanna shift your ass along the seat as you drive down. So if we angle that bottom seat, what we're stopping is any movement from our hip area. So a normal setup would be to lie back, engage the shoulders, and start pressing from here. But we do something a little bit different. As we set our shoulders, what I want you to do is scoot your hips forward a little bit and sink your shoulders down on the bench. Now you're gonna drive with your heels and push your hips back, leaving your shoulders where they are. So you can see what that does is it creates an arch in my lower back, but it also tabletops my chest. So you can see it's a difference from this body position to this body position. And this does two things. It helps me keep the shoulders retracted simply by pinning it with my body weight. But also, it raises the level of my chest, which puts my shoulders then behind my chest. 
So I'm able to stabilize this movement way easier than if my chest and shoulders were on the same level. And the ability to dip my chest is near enough impossible because of the way I've got my body positioned. So, quick recap. Feet planted, scoot your hips forward a little bit. Sit shoulders deep on the bench, then drive the hips back, leaving your shoulders where they are. We're gonna use the hammer grip. By bringing the weight into that hammer grip, we bring it to a really natural position for the body. From here is we're going to extend up, but we're only going to extend to probably round about here. So what we're not getting is a full extension with the arms, which also means we're keeping a lot of stress off the shoulders. Yes, this is kind of a partial movement in terms of extension of the arm, but focus on the chest remains really high if you get this right. It does take a little bit of practice and it takes a lot of negative control. The way this exercise works is more to do with the stop and start point than the full extension. Because it's a stop and start point where you're gonna maintain a lot of the load. The chest is already working before you even start that positive motion. This is going to be more of a light to medium weight when you start doing it. But once you get it dialed in, you can get relatively heavy, but it tends to be a little less heavier than the flat bench. Sit down. Be humble. Sit down. Be humble. Sit down. Be humble. Sit down. Flat is going to be a heavy press. Heavy in relation to what you're able to do. Remember that. Heavy is all relative. Heavy means what you're able to do whilst remaining solid with your technique and body posture. Above that, it's too heavy for you. Just let it go. Doesn't matter what the weight is. Doesn't matter what your mate does. Doesn't matter what the guy next to you is doing. Because that doesn't affect you. One other little movement a lot of people tend to miss out in the gym is called the pick up and put back. Ah. Amazing, but really useful. Just stand there. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Look where the front foot is of this machine. And then look where this foot closest to me is. See how off centered that is? But the wall over there is obviously what you're gonna be looking at. So you will be pressing towards the wall, even though the machine is angled off over there. This is another way that you can get an impingement or a problem or an injury or a leading side without knowing it. So always make sure the machines are angled straight parallel to whatever it is you're looking at, which often means getting a little bit down and dirty. Plate loaded seated press here, but this one may be a stack press that you have. This one works single arms uh, at a time. By that I mean, if you lift the right arm, the left arm stays where it is, they're not interlinked. If you have these and they work single arms, that's the best option. If you only have the ones that move as a single unit, then you know, so be it. The rules I'll give you for this will still apply, but if you can, use the single arms. First is first, seat height. You need to be at the right level to make sure you're not stressing the shoulders. A lot of people here will have it too low. All they do is have it round about here. You see when I press that, look how high that is in comparison to my chest. I want my hand to be almost just a little bit below my nipple when I pick that up. So now when it's pressed out, you can see slightly on a line or just below the nipple with the little finger. If your handles are a little straighter, try and have them just below the nipples. Hashtag nipples. <laughs> now, getting into the machine and pressing. Start right, finish right. I say it in every video, but it's very true. Here's what I don't want to be doing. One arm, lifting that up, then reaching around, stressing the shoulder to then get that one up. Look how awkward that movement was. And then putting it down, this horrible thing that people do. Here's how we get around it. You're gonna lever the weights out at the same time. It's a little bit like this. Hands on the top, and I'm gonna roll the hands around as I sit down. And it uses your body weight to shift the, the weights out. And at the same time, you can keep your shoulders down and back where they need to be through the entire motion. We're in, shoulders back and retracted, abs engaged, and then sit down and bum. And now I'm in. And you see I'm relatively relaxed. I've got no stress on my shoulders here. Next up, we set from the feet, we squeeze the glutes. Head back, head back on everything, head back on everything. Maintain that same posture we talked about before. Chest up, shoulders back, back, contracted. Drive through, stop, don't overextend, don't dip, don't bring the shoulders forward. And that's it, it's exactly the same movement, but the big thing on these is the negative errors people make, is as the weight comes down, they don't keep releasing at the elbow. What they'll do is they'll come down and release at the shoulders. See how my shoulders have now raised, and we end up with this scoop motion that you see people do, especially when they start putting too much weight on. If you can't control the weight down, keeping the shoulders down, and letting the elbows go back and down before driving out, then the weight is simply too heavy. Do not allow this scoop action to happen. You are destabilizing and restabilizing the shoulders with a loaded weight on them. It's super dangerous and really easy to just make something go pop. 
Stabilized machines are good because they do help take some of the stress off the shoulders, especially if they're pre-exhausted from doing some free dumbbell work. This is where these really come into play. What I wouldn't want to try and do is become dependent on using stabilized machines because then you're never gonna rehabilitate the issue. Finding out what you can do that's kind of free weight, then balance that with the stabilized motions so that that stabilization, the mind to muscle, body posture and everything is constantly being improved until the muscle's fully healed. With that said, let's get to work. Bring that ass, go! Goosebumps, goosebumps. This is gonna be the worst physique update slash change going instant cool down between sets. As some of you call it cable crossovers, I don't ever like crossing them over, so we're gonna call it cable flies. Let's take a quick look at some of the errors that people make on this exercise. So once we have the weights in both hands, what we're gonna to look to do is set the body. So we want the feet nice and planted, nice and stable. I know a lot of people will tend to do a leading foot. I disagree with that for the simple fact that if you have a leading side, you're not in a symmetrical state anymore and you will, whether you like to think it or not, lead with the leg that you have forward. This is a light exercise and often people end up with a leading foot because they're trying to lift too heavy. Feet in line, soft knees, we're gonna pull our abs in and keep that rib cage down and set the shoulders back with the chest up. So what I'm not doing here is tensing the abs to pull the rib cage down. Video link in the description below for the posture setup. Watch that to know what I'm talking about. Chest up, shoulders back. From here, what a lot of people will do is as they come up, they will again dip their chest over, they'll let the shoulders rise and then they'll fire back through like this. We're completely disengaging by doing that, putting all the load onto the shoulders, making the shoulder joints move and again risking injury plus aggravating any impingements. What we want is to keep the shoulders back, lats engaged again. Keep those lats engaged, it'll solve a lot of problems, it'll make it almost impossible to move out of alignment. From there, we're gonna come back with the elbows. What we want to avoid is this overextension of the arms. This is really gonna stress the shoulders. Then we're gonna drive back through by lifting the chest and pushing through with the palms, keeping a bend in the arm. And it kind of looks like this. And one thing you'll not notice is me doing this. Bringing my traps in, letting the shoulders rise. There's a lot of things you'll see. You want to be stood away so that the stacks are behind you, so that you are pulling through. A lot of people tend to stand a little bit too far in. They'll bend over and they, they, they pull downward here. But this is a really pronated position for the shoulders. You can see how far forward the shoulders are if I roll them back. But here is not comfortable. Whereas if I step just a foot forward, everything comes into alignment, everything's more stable. Plus that load stays on the chest more naturally because the weight is now pulling behind me, keeping the stress on the chest. If you get a lot of pain with this exercise, no matter how light you seem to go, you can try this adjustment in the hand position, but you can also try this adjustment in the hand position if you just wanna change some stuff up. What we're gonna do is rotate our palms and thumbs around so that we're now gonna drive our palms out and towards the wall ahead of us and we come through like this. So you can see my hands finish here rather than here. So it's that little bit of a difference and it will help you enable keeping the shoulders down and back and it's quite a nice natural movement to drive through and it's easy to gain a nice contraction with the chest if your mind to muscle connection is lacking a little bit. Let's get some work done. Bring that ass, go! So there you go, four exercises you can take immediately, drop them into your routine, hopefully they'll feel better for you. But I didn't want to finish there. I want to give you one more bodyweight exercise and that is going to be the dips. If we ever have anything with shoulder issues, we want to stay as compact as we can to help stabilize that shoulder joint. So with this, I will want to come in a little bit deeper so that the hands stay closer to the body. So once up, what a lot of people will do from this position is they will kick the legs back and tilt the body forward. And then they'll come down, they'll come down super deep, and then drive all the way back up like this. Coming down super deep is no different to going too deep with the weights. It's overstretching the shoulder, it's unnecessary. Tilting that body forward, think about where you're displacing your weight. By kicking your legs up and forward, you're basically throwing your body weight this direction. So the only thing that's gonna to have to work hard there is the shoulders to stop the body from tipping forward. We can create that same upper body angle without stressing the shoulders with one simple trick, and it's this. Up in position here, rather than kicking your feet back, you're gonna put your feet forward. Now we have our forward body angle, we're gonna keep our shoulders back. Now we're able to dip down, and the load maintained through the chest, 
I'm going to drive back up. It's as simple as this. Give it a go. Make sure that you are concentrating on the same factors we talked about before. Shoulders back, scapula engaged, core engaged, feet forward, elbows rolled. So not out, rolled. Then we're going to come down from the elbow, not allowing the shoulder joint to move, and then drive back up in a nice, controlled manner. Hopefully that is everything that you will need to put some good chest workouts back into your routine. Also help rehabilitate that shoulder. Make sure you're doing the mobility. Make sure you're doing your stretches. If it is really bad, make sure that you go and see a professional. Stop spending money on unnecessary accessories, nonsense that you don't need. If there's something wrong with your body, invest in it. Go and talk to a professional. See where the impingement issues lie because often we'll get referred pain. You may well be feeling shoulder pain at the front and the issue lies at the back. That is very very common but you won't know unless you get someone to look at you so top tip for the day listen to what i've just said with everything we've done and seek out some professional help if you need it <laughs> okay it's like four degrees in here and i'm doing my best to show you the change in the body but hopefully still you can see just the striations veins just how things start to pop that little bit more but you can just see things look fuller, a little bit more shoulder detail. Ah, that's, that's not all going me, Jake. <laughs> it's too cold. Anyway, I hope I've proven a little bit of a point that obviously at the beginning, uh, I didn't look quite as kind of lean even, if anything, just because that blood gets going, but it's so fucking cold in here. It's really hard to keep a pump, but you can see, Things start to pump, lines start to appear that weren't there before and won't stay. I'm already starting to flatten off. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it really does help you get some of those chest movements back into your workout and help maybe alleviate a little bit of aggravation that you feel like you can't do something that maybe, you know, I know it's the worst thing in the world for me when I mentally am ready to go, but the body just won't be able to commit to what I'm trying to make it do. So these little tweaks, hopefully they'll help you even if one or two of them only work, then just utilize those one or two and continue with the rehab, continue with the mobility, just get stronger. Take your time, don't rush it. This whole game, it's a long game. It doesn't happen in weeks, it happens in months and years. So don't be too hard on yourselves. The fact that you are in the gym and wanting to work is half of the battle anyway. The mental game is just as strong as the physical game here. It's just a matter of being smart and working around it, not through it. If you've liked this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Make sure you're hitting the notification bell to make sure you know when the videos are going up. I'm gonna have to keep repeat saying this, I'm bored of hearing it too, but if YouTube are gonna screw things up, I want to reduce the variables so I'm still getting information out to you guys. So stay tuned to the social medias that you'll see coming up here because that's where I'm gonna post up video ideas and have you guys vote on which ones you want me to do. And that's how we will just continue to flow. You'll be expected to see at least two workout videos a week from this point on with one vlog, but I'm gonna cover that more in a channel update as well as 2018 uh, events that are gonna be happening and some really cool stuff that's going down. And we'll cover that in the entire video, which will be uploaded soon. Until then, I'm gonna go put on about eight layers and get a brew, get a good brew. A good brew with a good sugar. Brew. Oh, that's right. Yes. Oh, sugar in your brew? You're crazy. Legs out. <laughs>